In this video, we learn about spherical boundaries and lenses. By convention, the radius of curvature R is positive for a convex boundary and negative for a concave surface. Here, the normal to the boundary is shown by a dashed line. Theta 1 is the angle of incident ray with respect to the optical axis. So this is the optical axis, this angle is theta 1, and also this angle is theta 1. If we continue the normal to the medium 2, it crosses the optical axis on the center of the curvature. And the angle with the optical axis is phi, as shown here. Also, the height of the incident point is y. This is y, and this height is also y. Now, if we apply Snell's law, the incident angle is theta 1 plus phi, as you see here. Theta 1, and this is phi. The refraction angle is phi minus this angle because this is phi and the total angle here is also phi. Phi minus this angle, which is shown by minus theta 2, where the minus sign comes from a convention, and we have seen one another example in the previous videos, then I can obtain the refraction angle, that, and if I substitute in the Snell's law, I obtain this relation, n1 sine of theta 1 plus phi is equal to n2 sine of phi minus minus theta 2. In the paraxial approximation, the angles are so small that I can substitute, of, substitute sine of an angle with the angle itself. So, I can write n times theta 1 plus phi is almost equal to n2 times phi plus theta 2. Or, if I simplify this equation, I can write theta 2 is n1 over n2 times theta 1 plus n minus n2 over n2 times phi. But from the figure, we see that angle phi is almost equal to y over r. The distance between the center of curvature to the boundary is r, and the height is also y. And so I can approximate and uh, write phi is equal to y over r. So I substitute this to the above relation and obtain this equation. Theta 2 is almost equal to n1 over n2 times theta 1 minus n2 minus n1 divided by n2r times y. Also, I can express theta 1 and theta 2 versus the height and the horizontal distances. For example, here, theta 1 is y over z1. This is theta 1. The distance between point P1 and the boundary is z1, and the height is y. Also, angle theta 2 minus theta 2 is almost equal to y over z2. Z2 is distance between the, uh, the boundary and point P2. So this is angle minus theta 2, which is equal to this one. And the distance is Z2, and the height is Y. So I can 
substitute in the previous relation and obtain this one. And if I cancel y, I obtain this famous equation n1 over z1 plus n2 over z2 is almost equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r. Also, I can obtain this relation between y2 and y1. So here, for example, I uh, displace point P1 and P2 off the axis. They are not located on the axis. So here, for example, P1 is located as, at y1 and z1. And P2 is located at, at y2 and z2. Now, this angle is y1 over z1. And this angle is minus y2 over z2 because y is below the axis. Now, if I use the Snell's law for this ray, for example, I can write y2 is minus n1 over n2, z2 over z1, y1. Z1 and Z2 are called conjugate planes. Every point in the first plane has a corresponding point image in the second with uh, magnification. Let me come back to the previous slide. This is Z1 plane and this is Z2 plane. It is clear that if I put my object at point P1, I will get an image at point P2 with map magnification Y2 is this guy. And also if I put the object at point P2, I get an image at point P1. These two points are conjugate. Points. The negative sign of the magnification implies that the image is inverted. By convention, P1 is measured in a coordinate system pointing to the left and P2 in a coordinate system pointing to the right. So if I come back to the previous slide, so this means that Z1 and Z2 are both positive. But if point P2 is located in the left side, then Z2 is negative. Rays of large angles do not obey these praxial laws. The deviation result in the image is called aberration. Now we want to discuss collimator for LED light. This is an optical system that combines reflection and refraction. So for example here, see, so for example here we see an example, the LED light is emitting light from here. Some part is reflected from the paraboloidal boundary. These are reflected rays and some part are refracted from the spherical boundary. Now we discuss spherical lenses. A spherical lens is bounded by two spherical surfaces, as you see here. It is defined by two radii of curvature, R1 and R2. R1 
is positive because this is a convex surface and R2 is negative because this is a concave surface and the thickness of the lens is delta. We usually ignore the thickness of the thin lenses in our calculations. Also, the refractive index of the lens is n. The focal length of a, of a thin spherical lens is obtained from this relation. 1 over f is n minus 1 times 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. You have seen this equation in university physics too. And we can easily obtain that by applying the uh, this equation twice. Yes. We obtain this equation for the boundary of two media. So when I have a lens, I should apply this equation twice to obtain this equation. Now we see uh, an example of a uh, thin lens. This is a di uh, converging lens and we have a source located at point P1 whose coordinates are Y1 and Z1 and the image is formed on the other side of the lens with coordinates Y2 and Z2. All rays originating from P1 meet each other at point P2. The image equation is this. It's very similar to the equation for the mirrors. 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 is 1 over F. And the magnification is given by Y2 is minus Z2 over Z1 times Y1. The proof of these equations are simple. You can uh, maybe find some of them in the problems. The previous equations we obtained are valid in the paraxial approximation. If we have some rays far from the axis, then we have deviation from the, the equations we have seen before. The presence of non-paraxial rays results in aberrations. So for example, here we, we see that all rays are not focused to a single point, And this is aberration. The dashed envelope of the refracted rays is called caustic curve. These are refracted rays and this is an envelope to the rays which is shown by a dashed line. We saw an, another example of caustic curve in the previous lessons.